we record now we are um today is march 16th and you have reached the community call for chaos so we're super happy that you're here uh, it's going to be a good day i can feel it my daughter is ready to go into labor at any moment so i might have to dash out get her to the hospital but i can't go in that really sucks but anyway that's an aside um so i hope everyone's doing good we have some new faces on the call today. So welcome, welcome. We're really happy to see you um, and or your avatars that are static, but we still are happy to, that you're here anyway. Um, just so you know, if anyone who's new here, um, absolutely, totally fine. Keep your camera off. We do not care at all. If you would like to communicate with us, you can use the chat. Um, we try to incorporate that into the, the flow of the meeting. So feel free to utilize that if you'd rather do that. Um, yeah. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to just, you know, raise your hand or speak up or do whatever you need to get our attention and break the flow. So we don't care at all. Super informal. We're just happy to see you. Um, if you have not put your name in the minutes, uh, we will drop that link in here one more time in the chat. Please feel free to do so just to tell everybody how you're doing and, and uh, what's going on in your world today. Um, looks like we have some exciting things happening. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So let's go right into the agenda. Um, we have, in the DEI working group, we were talking about chaos con and it's come up a couple of times. Um, and obviously this year is weird as we all know, um, just like last year was weird. It's still being weird. So, um, but hopefully by OSSEU, which is at the end of September, beginning of October in Dublin, um, they're hoping to have in-person meetings. And if so, there might be a chance that we can um, kind of connect to that uh, a day either before or after. Um, but if that doesn't work out, um, we do have some interest in maybe doing a chaos con light, uh, which is an idea that came up again in the DEI working group. And that would be a virtual thing, not a big deal, not a big formal, long, drawn out thing, maybe just a couple of hours with some quick lightning talks. Um, just to kind of give people a chance to interact with us and get to know chaos and what we're all about and what we do. Um, so we just thought we would bring it to the community meeting um, and just see what y'all think about that. Just as kind of like a maybe a backup or or even in addition to doing something more formal and, and drawn out at, at uh, OSSEU. Um, and we were thinking maybe over the summer even or something like that or, or early fall. So I um, just wanted to float that around to see what people thought about that. I know ChaosCon has been a topic of conversation numerous times, um, but here it is again. So, <laughs> so what do we think? Do we want to chat about this? Do we want to keep deferring until we know more? What do we want to do? And I, I think part of this is, um, you know, thinking about the fact that OSSEU might be in person slash virtual. I think they're being a little bit optimistic, but, but maybe. Um, and I will admit, I have sort of changed my position on like doing some kind of chaos con because initially I said that we should, we just shouldn't do it. We should just wait until we can do it in person again. Um, but, you know, a year later and we're still not doing in-person conferences. So maybe, maybe we, we do something. Um, but one of the things we talked about in the DEI working group is, um, you know, if we did it at OSSEU, let's let's assume that it actually does happen in person and we do it there, then we would want to tie it to the event. However, if that doesn't happen and OSSEU ends up being virtual, I think the last thing we need is one more day of a virtual conference. Like I, I just don't, I don't agree with tagging a bunch of things onto a virtual conference because the whole point of doing that is because you have people in one physical location and that's not true with a virtual conference. So this makes it really hard to plan because do we plan it as if it's going to be, you know, face to face, or do we plan it as if it's going to be virtual and not try to tie it to OSSEU, or do we, or do we not do anything at all? Um, I can tell you. Go ahead, Sean. I can tell you, I'm responsible for the budget, like my signature for a conference in January 2022, and my colleagues and I, have, we're, we're going for it. We're just. It's, it's happening and nothing's going to stop us. And if we have to cancel it, we'll deal with those contractual obligations one way or another. But yeah, we feel our the, this community I'm in academically really feels it's, it's time. In January, will, it will be time. Um, but we could be wrong. 
<laughs> One question I would ask to Elizabeth and even Don, because I'm sure you, you've talked about this uh, DEI working group. Uh, if it should happen in person, uh, and I heard through the grapevine that if Dublin or Ireland isn't safe, they're looking at backup options too, to make sure that there's a high probability it's going to happen in person. Like whether it's in, in person or not, um, you know, I don't think there's any harm in uh, organizing a DEI like a recession, whether it's virtual or in person, just plan for it. And then if it happens in person, it becomes, you know, part of the chaos gone day. If not, then, you know, we'll, you know, we can have an event separately from, from the virtual event. That's just my thinking. And I, I agree, like we've gone way too long uh, without any event. And it's just, uh, what I'm worried about those events that are not uh, doing anything even virtually, you, you just become like invisible after a while. So I, I, I'm sort of, you know, my, you know, you know, I should just plan for something for two hours, you know, and then we'll deal with like whether this happens in person or we do sort of a off, you know, um, like a virtual event if it doesn't, if OSSEU doesn't happen in person, but sorry, I kind of rambled on, but. And just, just to be clear, we're not, we're yeah. not necessarily talking about DEI sessions at a chaos con. It just yeah. ha the topic of chaos con as a whole came up in the DEI working group. Yeah. Um, so just. Oh, to, okay. To so right, I think sorry. Yeah. yeah. I have two questions. First, I think yeah. there's no harm in having two plans and planning towards two ends. Like it doesn't cost a lot really. Uh, and so we can plan for the in-person and we can also be softly planning for not in-person. Does, does anyone know where the alternate sites are that are being they're considered? They're not telling. They're, I mean, it'll, I assume it'll be in Europe, but they're not. They're, I didn't necessarily ask, but they're looking at if Ireland vaccination is not going well, for, for, for example, then they're going to alternate options. But... They're really trying to shoot for an in-person event. At limited, I mean, at limited capacity, it's going to look different. But that's what I've heard. And the other thing we talked about in the yeah. DI working group is that we can probably compress the schedule um, for organizing this, especially if yeah. we did something a little bit shorter. So we don't necessarily have to have the CFP open for a really long time, and we don't necessarily we can we could probably pull together a chaos con a month or a month and a half before before an event, especially oh. if people could present virtually as well. I don't know what the, I know these are gonna be hybrid events, but we you know we could also wait to plan it until we got a little bit closer to to the date too. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't, saying. We don't have any pressing, I agree we don't have anything pressing our schedule right now. It's March, right? So, uh, I would I would be happy to kind of like hedge towards an in-person event. I'm, I'm yeah. with Don. I think that I am too. Right, we could probably organize even if it's just a half day prior or in conjunction with OSS EU if it happens. And you know what? If it doesn't happen, well, so what? I'll just like just eat that time, or we'll find a way to do it virtually, maybe a month later or something like that. Yeah, I like, think if it doesn't happen, we we plan to do it virtually, just not tagged onto the conference. We could do it a couple of weeks later. Yep. Uh, and I think to, I th go ahead, Kevin. I thought uh, much. I was gonna say one thing to keep in mind is even though even though people are going to be more and more comfortable getting together in groups, I think international travel is going to kind of take some time to get back up. So a, a chaos con in Europe or a chaos con event in Europe is probably going to have really, really low turnout from people in the States currently, and probably vice versa, if we were to do one in the States, we probably wouldn't get very many people from Europe. So just something to think about. Yeah, I'd, I'd get on a plane to Europe tomorrow, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of it depends on individual countries. Like, you know, I'm, I, I live in the UK and we're really not allowed to travel right now. There's just kind of a ban on travel unless you have a specific reason to do it. I mean, so we're just really not allowed to travel right now. The way I think about it in person event is 
I, I would schedule a facility for an entire day. I would schedule a half a day of program. I think if we get together and I think we will, people will just want to sit around and talk. I think I think if appropriate beverages are provided, a half day of program and a half day of just sitting around and, and it's not like we'd be talking about nothing. We would have things to talk about, but we don't have to structure it. I think people will be so glad just to see each other and talk to each other in person and enjoy an adult beverage if they're so inclined that that reserve the space for a day, half day program. Do that. Does anyone think there will be any sort of quarantining going on? Like once we get there, will we need to quarantine? Has anyone heard it? any inclination? Of, I mean, that's impossible to say, I know, but just something yeah. else to think about. I think that would depend more on the local laws, the law of uh, let's say Dublin and based on vaccine, because globally the leaders are now uh, targeting October, let's say September, August, September as the target point to get everyone vaccinated. And if yeah. the mass of the people are vaccinated, they can cluster. So yeah. vaccine will be the delimiter to determine that. And I mean, the, the, the host government will always have the upper hand. And uh, I think I'm, quarantine would make it a no-go. Like yeah, you can organize yeah. a conference if no. the local country was quarantining people. Yeah, you'd be, nobody you'd be would SOL. Go. I mean, at this point, trying to keep track of the pandemic is like trying to fill out a baseball scorecard when you should be sitting in your seat watching the game and drinking a beer. It's like it's changing so much, and there's so many. I don't have no idea. I don't think any of us do. Yeah. I mean, this. I mean, obviously, like Don and and Matt, both of you said, like we we got time. Like we don't start any of the CFP or any of the process like today. We got we got a few more months before we do that. But when we do start, we can we can start start off like they, there'll be two pack. There'll be a half day option if it's you know for a virtual one, and then if it looks like it's very likely that it's going to happen in person, then it's we'll just switch to like a full day versus a half a day. But I don't think we need to start until probably not until like late April, early May is my guess. But I, hopefully I by then it'll be a little clearer like what's going on locally. So. I'm assuming that the most difficult thing is the venue booking and canceling. So I'm assuming that'll, John, is yeah. if you find a place, then if you let us know when we have to cancel by, that also gives us our, yeah. our date to call it. Um, yeah. I mean, based they on like that, yeah. they just give us a room yeah. in the venue. Yeah. we're not that big that, so that will, we won't have to worry about that, will that won't be our money. problem no. that's ls problem like i'm on the hook for 45 grand on this january conference not personally but i mean i'll kill the conference if it doesn't go that's, so my recommendation based on this is we kind of plan for an in-person event to don's point too i mean i look at this call alone and there's 22 people on this call so we even if it's a half day we can still do a CFP. I think there's plenty of people who would be happy to talk if it happens in person. You know what I mean? So I don't think it would be hard, honestly, to have a half day worth of talks if that's where we were at. Um, I yeah. think that would just be such a positive thing. So yeah. as, as an extra comment here, maybe, maybe what may happen at the end is that some people, I mean, if there is an, an in-person event, maybe there are some people joining the discussion there in person, but maybe there are others that are not joining for any reason, finally. Maybe they are not vaccinated, I don't, I don't know. Um, so thinking about setting up some hybrid model, maybe maybe something to have in mind as well. Like for instance, maybe within Europe, it's easier to fly than maybe going overseas. I don't know, that may happen. Or maybe, I know, Spaniards, we are not allowed to, to go to Dublin because maybe we are not still in a good position to, to go there. So as these kind of things may happen, setting up the whatever just to have this hybrid model may, may work um, just to, to have in mind. I do think if we if we decide that we're gonna plan it as as an in-person event and that actually does happen, I think to Daniel's point, it's going to be lightly attended because there are still going to be a lot of people who aren't yet vaccinated, aren't yet comfortable traveling. Um, I think I think we're not gonna get as many people as we as we would 
at least not in person. Well, maybe we could live stream it too. Just kind of put that into the thing. That'd be cool. So Matt G, should we reach out to the LF and see if they can just hold us a room temporarily? Yeah, yeah I've already been kind of talking to Brian awesome. Warner about this. So he kind of knows, you know, it, it's exactly this conversation. <laughs> so he knows we're interested, but I'm happy to be a little bit more official too. Perfect. All right, that was extremely productive. Thank you everyone for your thoughts and insight on this. Um, let's go ahead and move on. So we have a few other things, not a ton, but we have a few. Um, someone dropped in here four big sustainability questions. If I had to guess, I would guess that was Matt G. That was that in there. Stunningly. So um, Vicki, who I think many of you know, had put a nice, I don't know, post. Oh, so if you click on the link, I just, I thought it was really nice set of questions that communities can ask themselves. So where's the project now? Where does the project wanna be? How do we get from where we're at now to where we wanna be? And, or, you know, and then how do we stay where we wanna be? So I, you know, I don't know if we ever wanna kind of sit down as a community and start mapping this out. We've had a lot of success over the years, uh, which is great. Um, so I, I just read the I just read the article. I was like, that's super interesting. And <laughs> as, as a community, do do we wanna? Be more explicit on these things or or not i, th I think yes. having a, a strategic plan you know not in the way universities do them where we change them every 12 months but you know an actual strategic plan is is helpful like to know what we want to try to accomplish and what we think is next i've kind of had on my um wish list to do list uh, to take a survey of the uh, a pulse survey of the community to see kind of where people stand and like how they feel and how the community is is working for them um, and what they think we could do to improve and I think this fits in very nicely to that kind of idea that's been ruminating in the back of my head. Um, it, Matt, would you envision us sending out a survey like this with some questions that kind of relate to this or would you prefer to maybe have a like roundtable discussion of those who are interested or how would you see this going forward? I hadn't thought about that. I just put the link in, in this Google Doc and that was the end of it for me at the moment. So, but when you were talking, I was actually putting a note in there in the minutes that listening to you talk that we're thinking maybe the Pulse survey could kind of be related to these questions that might be a really nice frame. Because I would I'm really love to hear. Open. Yeah, what people think about this and like what their personal feelings and thoughts are on how they envision the project, because I think we get some really interesting answers to that. So yeah, I might uh, give myself an action item to, to kind of flesh something out if, if everyone's cool with that. If no one thinks that that's a terrible, horrible idea. It is <laughs> and if not, you do, please tell me. <laughs> it's not a terrible, horrible idea. Cool. Well, I love to give myself more work. That's usually my goal because that works out great when that happens. But I think this is really cool and very interesting. So yes. Ray put a comment in there too that just saw that. Yeah. Might be good for the governing board. Yes, a hundred percent. Do we know when that next meeting is? Some sometime. So I would look at soon. Nicole and. Georg, who are the current co-chairs, they typically schedule that. So I'm guessing it would be in April, but I'll ping them just because I know that it can be hard to get on people's schedule without uh, much notice. Yeah. Oh, hi, Nicole. Hello. I am on. I will, uh, I'll talk, I'll touch base with Georg about that. That'd be cool. Great, moving along. Um, we have in here the uh, Google Summer of Code update. Um, for those who are interested, I think some, some on this call might be interested in this topic. So um, we put a link in to where the ideas are being kept. 
And we have ideas for Gamora Lab, Augur, the Chaos Metrics release, and also the Chaos website itself. So if any of those general topics interest you, go take a look at those ideas. Um, and then I also linked here um, how we select students and what the next steps are so that they know for sure what they're supposed to be doing. Um, so you can take a look at that as well. Does anyone have comments on this or questions? I think there's also been updates on the mailing list and I put some stuff in the newsletter too. So there's a lot of information floating around out there, but if you have, if you need clarification on anything or if you have questions, um, feel free to ask them. And I know the hope when uh, Georg organizes a lot of this is that for those who have an interest in participating in Google Summer of Code, that you either post your questions to the mailing list or to an issue in the governance document, just because then we can make sure the answer is seen by everybody because other people might have similar questions too. Seems like a reasonable request. Indeed it does. And Sean, did you, are you good with micro tasks? I know you were doing them over the weekend. Um, I'm not <laughs> sure what you mean by micro tasks. So for each one of the potential projects, right? We have micro tasks that the- Oh yeah, potential... I did those on okay. Saturday after the hackathon. Okay, um, I just yeah, had it. I got, yeah, they're, they're, I, I updated them and updated the links on the sheet and everything on Saturday, like by one o'clock. I just, cool. I had a hell left. It was right, it was right before my, I got not well, so I got okay. that. Well, thank you. Anything else on this? Questions, comments, concerns? No, I think one of our, you know, the next step too is that based on the applications, I think the order is that we put in how many slots that we have an in interest to support this year. So it's kind of a series of events, right? So if you're interested in the project, take a look at the open ideas, take a look at the micro tasks, um, issue a pull request against the issue or against the, your, the interest markdown file. And then based on the accomplishment of the micro tasks and the potential um, students who would participate. We then go back to Google and say we would like, you know, one slot or four slots or whatever it might be. So there's just kind of a series of things that are happening at this point. But I think we have it all pretty well ironed out. I mean, they don't tell us how many slots we have until the end of the, what's the end of the period of uh, evaluation? I'm not sure. I have to go look. I'm not sure either. Okay, I think we're probably good to move along. So that's what we're gonna do. Join us as we move forward. Okay, the next one on here is says, Google season of docs. Someone wrote, I'm not sure how LF payments work. Yeah, that's me again. So sorry. Um, so basically Google season of docs is, is obviously a different program than um, Summer of code. Did I say <laughs> summer of docs? I don't know. They always kind of like just get mushed in my head. I know. Um, so the so this is they're both obviously a little bit different this year. So um, so this year the way that payments work for season of docs is um, the season of docs organization is pays the community, and then the community pays the person who got selected, see what I'm saying? So unlike um, Summer of Code, Summer of Code program pays the students directly. So we have to figure out how to just logistically get the money from Season of Docs. Right now our bank account sort of thing is that it's the old community bridge thing, LFX something or other. So I, I think we just need to figure out if we can pay somebody out of that account. Because if, if we can't, then we may have to set up an account with the Linux Foundation itself and pay in there. And was it, Matt, was a payment process for a season of docs different last year? Like It was, 
Yes. Okay. So we, All right, we so never saw the money. Right, this right. one now involves us for some reason. I'm not sure why, but that's okay. That's, that's odd. Right, so I don't want to. I just don't want it, the money. Right, that uh, actually makes it like more complicated. Like it's a little bit more complicated, and I just don't want the money to end up in the old community bridge again, whatever it's called now. And then it, it's like a real right. pain for us to get it out of there to right. pay the student. So we just need to figure out that logistics. Sorry, that's a very like low level logistical issue. Yeah. it's something we have to think about. If I recall correctly, um, when we were looking at the website migration, we had the same question, if we could just pay the new host from our community bridge account, and the answer was no, you cannot. No. So I think invoice. we are going to have, yeah. So I think if there's a way for us to have something else through the LF, that would work. I don't know what that would be or what that would look like, but I think we're going to need to do that. I mean, one of the other thoughts is that... Um... I think there are other, so we like the, the community bridge thing because it's open and transparent on our finances. So for example, as somebody contributes say to ChaosCon to support it, right? We can see that money in there, we see it. And then like, you know, Ray, you're on that, the committee that approves things, right? So as the approvals get made to pay somebody back for work, um, like they actually submit receipts. It's all transparent. It's open and transparent. I think there are other, other tools that do this, like have your books open and transparently observable by everybody. So I, I don't think Community Bridge is the only. Yeah, you know, I mean, there are other platforms out there that, uh, I mean, actually, Georg may know of, of like a couple of tools that, that provide those services. I, I don't know what the costs are. Um, yeah, I mean, Matt, I guess like, you know, Yumi and Georg, since, I mean, are, are you still like yeah. helping with finances? Yeah. So yeah. we can start an email thread or we can jump on a call. Like maybe that's the easiest way to do it. Like, or, I mean, or ask LF because I, I doubt we're the only project that are doing season of docs at the LF. Like, I don't know how other projects are handling it. I mean, they, the answer might be they're not using community bridge so everything that it works but we might have to find an alternative okay. like a platform to just to manage this money or maybe we manage all of our finances through that but there are fundraising okay. like tools that 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 other communities use i don't remember remember that off the top of my head but i, I remember talking about that with gary at one point okay Yep, I'd be happy to talk through that. I don't yeah. have a ton of sway here, but I do know the organizers of that program. So I can ask what other projects or foundations are using just to see if there's one platform or tool that seems to be popular and functional oh. in this case. So I'm happy um, to ask. I might not find anything, but I'm assuming no, if this is your problem now, I'd love to see how others are solving it. And they might have a view of that because they have to integrate with those tools. That'd be cool. I'll track that down and just send you a note. Sophia. Thank you, Sophia, for offering that. Any other questions about this or thoughts? Um, okay, well, we have about 18 minutes left. I can do math, I'm good at it. Um, so what else is on our minds? What do we want to talk about? We have time. We never have time. What the heck? We could just end the meeting. Whatever. What, what, what do y'all want to do? I guess I'd just like to say it's fantastic to see so many people on this call. It's really awesome. Uh, well, you did, you did bring up the website hosting. So I guess I would... Uh like to know where we're at on that or who I can coordinate with to make that happen? Or if it's still, is it a funding issue where we don't know where the money is gonna come from? Um, I, I, I think Matt Snell bought the domain and I can put up the $100 a year and expense myself. I submit expenses every month for services like this that I already paid for. So 
What do you mean bought the domain? I thought the LF owned the domain. Well, yeah, I think he bought something, some like domain, so nobody else bought it to, like, as a defensive measure. Yeah, I bought a domain so that we could host some um, some of the um, other work that we're doing um, on it for a GitHub um, kind of kind of website thing that we're working on. And um, chaos.org was nine dollars, which is pretty cool. Um, and I, I I just think that. Um, that that's right now redirecting to chaos that community so it's not a big deal right now i think we're talking about some other kind of hosting yeah I think my question two different these are two different conversations i think yeah so my, my question would be uh so if chaos chaos that community is our is our website are you going to have chaos.org go someplace else so is that going to so that's going to capture chaos.community traffic and redirect to chaos.org well, hold us, all of a sudden we collapsed uh, yeah, two yeah, conversations sorry. into yeah, one. I, I didn't, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to do that. But <laughs> Way to go, Sean. <laughs> what a shocker that <laughs> I'm I did. Just <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's totally fine. It's totally me. So just with respect to the website moving, Kevin, um, it, it's still just chaos.community and that is all good. And then, um, Brian Warner is all set to kind of just redirect chaos.community to whatever the IP address is that we set up at our new hosting service. So just step one, that's step one. <laughs> so. Okay. In, so regards, the, in regards to a similar domain name that is being used by the organization for a different purpose, uh, I would say that is probably not best practice Yep. So let's, again, let's not, can we? <laughs> it wouldn't be, it's not an ideal situation. It's more of preventing someone else from owning that domain and confusing people. Yeah. I mean, if we were going to use it, I would redirect it to chaos.community. Yes. That's, that's currently Correct. what's going on. So yes. Yeah. My understanding was that you were going to use the domain for something else. Okay. Yes. No, like, uh, okay. I'm not. I promise. You have my word. I am the most trustworthy person on earth. Sorry, that was a joke. Sorry for the uh, trying to trump it up for you there. So the so the original question, Kevin, was like, who's going to pay for the hosting service for the new WordPress site? Yes, and can yes. we can we get that rolling? Uh, so the answer is yes, we can get that rolling. So I guess we need to somebody has to basically pay for the new hosting site. So what do you, what do you kind of logistically or maybe like um, the order of events, what would you need Kevin to make that work for you? Well, we, we can't really do anything until we, until we pay for the new hosting site. So that's the, the first step is to actually go and grab the hosting site and then, and then we can move on from there. Okay, so it's really just about Kind of setting up an account at, at, I think we decided on Green Geeks, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I can, I can, if Sean is going to do that, I'm, I'm happy to uh, be on the call with him or help, help coordinate or just be part of. Yeah, that I want to make sure. I want to make sure the but, whole thing is in Chaos's name, and I'll just give him a credit card to pay it with, and I'll get reimbursed from my funds here. I'm not going to. Or you can also get reimbursed from Community Bridge, Sean. So I mean that's all that extra that's, a, that's a neat for a hundred dollars all that paperwork sounds so worth it. It's not community bridge is not hard to get reimbursed from. Um, oh really? If you have, rece if you have receipts. Oh yeah. well, I mean yeah, I mean your choice either okay. way. All right, I, I think I'll save the community bridge money for somebody else. Okay, um, there was a question in the chat that says, how was chaos community created? Does it have an interesting story? And we have our about page, but um, I think Matt G would probably, he's such a good storyteller. I will let him well, share. No, I, no, well, that's not a good setup. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, <laughs> oh, come on. You are a good storyteller. Well, so chaos.community. So chaos, the, the name chaos, just if people care, there's some dispute as to who came up with it, just so you know. I see. So, yeah, Sean says it was him, and I think it was Mike Dolan. 
at the Linux Foundation. It was probably Mike Dolan. There were beers involved, and I just remember it wrong. So, but it's, it's make, totally I'm possible to go with that, that story that I remember it right. Does anybody else remember this story at all? Like, who came up with I it? I remember we were discussing about that name. And then I remember at a point in time, I was trying to introduce the concept of inner source as well, but then it didn't fit that well. So I said, okay, let's forget about that. So then finally we had chaos. And yeah, that so who, who, who coined, do you remember who coined the name? Oh, Mike Dolan. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, we got another one I, right there. I do remember, a, I remember a discussion in the, in the, uh, in the documents where multiple yeah. names were, were brought up. And I, I believe we may have even been using a, an acronym uh, machine uh, to come up with some clever names. I don't remember that. Uh, yeah. Again. <laughs> So that's the the chaos name, and it was just obviously one of those. As we were running, if we had an acronym machine, it was obviously one that as soon as that came out of the acronym machine, or, oh, or I, I don't think said, it, I don't think it actually came from the acronym machine. But I remember we were we were playing with one to try to come up well, with acronyms. So. As soon as chaos came forward, that was just the end of the discussion. Period. Yeah, it was perfect. That was <laughs> it was absolutely perfect. We had no idea how prescient we were. <laughs> Um, so that's the name. And then the dot community, I think that was just somebody at the LF was just grab that domain. So that's actually, actually interesting. Georg, Georg picked that. Oh, well, that's, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Good to know. So um, how did the chaos community itself come to be? I think there was something about a conference and writing names on a board. Oh, well, that's all. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's, let's do that one next time. Okay. <laughs> one story at a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have 10 minutes left, but you know, that's it. A... <laughs> uh, next time. Okay. I have, to, I have to like brace myself for that one. So, I think it's good. It's, well, now I really want to hear it. Okay, fine. So, basically, what it, so basically, uh, what it was was um, so Sean and I were at a, at a conference in, um, in Copenhagen and, um, we were talking about uh, corporate engagement with open source communities. So just kind of the challenge that corporations um, bring with respect to, to open source and, and what that means for open source. And um, Arfan Smith was sitting at the table. So do, do any of you know Arfan? Arfan was at GitHub at the time. Uh, and obviously GitHub at the time was very interested in how corporations were starting to kind of exist on the GitHub platform. So Arfan said, we at GitHub are also very interested in, in this as well. Um, and so he connected us with uh, folks at the Sloan Foundation. So the Alfred Sloan Foundation to kind of just explore this idea of what community health means and what the impact is for organizations, not just corporate organizations, but really any organization that's starting to get involved in in open source. And a lot of the, you know this, right? Because organizations participating in open source is, is kind of a thing. Um, so we went to the to the collab summit or leadership summit or member summit, whatever it's called <laughs> at, the, at the current state of affairs. And we, so this was during that first year where slow- Not happening, funny. I think is what it's called. Well, but you all remember this conference, right? I mean, the one that's been at SQUA for the last couple of years. Um, and so there was a birds of a feather board and Georg Link said, we should put open source community health and sustainability on the board to see if anybody has an interest. So we weren't on the schedule at all. And I was like, There's, nobody's gonna come. I don't wanna do it. So nobody's, nobody's gonna attend this session. This sounds like, <laughs> sounds like just a lot of work. I don't wanna do it. So Georg was like, do it, do it, do it. So I was like, fine, let's put it on the board. Um, and it was down in the basement of this, this hotel in Squaw Valley and probably 45 people showed up that had an expressed interest in better understanding open source community health. I was totally stunned. I had even told Georg, I'm like, just bring your laptop because we're just gonna work on a paper. We're just gonna, it's just gonna be you and me sitting there totally doing, <laughs> totally doing nothing while, <laughs> while nobody appears. Um, and so sure enough, 45 people came. We never even made it through introductions of every 40 people, whatever. We never even made it through introductions. It was absolutely fantastic. 
um, we were able to reach back out to, to Josh at Sloan and say this was a, a huge success. And we, at that meeting too, we talked with uh, Kate Stewart uh, and Mike Dolan as well. And really from that point forward, uh, we just had a project called Open Source Community Health or something like that. Um, and that was really the, the beginnings of it. And I will also say, Daniel, you can fill in the parts with Baturgia and Grimoire Lab because there was also kind of a parallel discussion occurring at the same time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, from, from Viteria, from that perspective, we were kind of, uh, um, so our customers were uh, mostly open source foundations. We were kind of a half of foundations with that specific question in mind, like, hey, what, what does health mean, sustainability, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we were already providing metrics to them. So it was like some, we were having some conversation about, hey, what if we put all of these people together thinking about this topic and so on. And of course, there are other companies and people and, and so on involved um, here and there. Um, yeah, so that's that's more or less the discussion. And as far as I remember, the I think this happened in this literacy summit at some point, and then we had some discussions, further discussions. Then we started to work in the charter document or so. We had this conversation about the name, the logo that was done by the uh, Linux Foundation as well. And that was not the one I voted for, by the way. There's an alternate logo out there somewhere. <laughs> and I didn't vote for the one we currently have. <laughs> yeah. um, Does it make you angry, Matt, when you see it every, every day? Every day, I can still see the one I voted for <laughs> in my oh. head. I, I so can't cool. remember there ever being a different logo proposed. It's, yeah, there were like four, four different logos. Yeah, I should, yeah, I should we, try to find them. Yeah, we were voting probably in, in our email. Should be around. I need to look for that. I, I don't remember. Um, yeah, and um, then so we we had I think our first Grimoire Con from Grimoire Lab in that year in 2017 in in Boston or the previous one, um, and then. And then we went based on these conversations, we thought about well donating the project, even when this was already open source to the Linux Foundation. So then it was Viteria, with Grimoire Lab, Ogor. I, I don't Ogor was donated from the very beginning, right? So mm -hmm. okay, it yeah. Kind of, then we yeah had, well, it was it was we really needed a Grimoire Lab, and then Augur was, you know, to create chaos, we needed Grimoire Lab involved. You guys, the Grimoire Lab has been a long-standing tool. Mm. And, and then uh, Red Hat with uh, Prospector donated this as open source as well, um, and GitDM by the University of Victoria with Daniel Hermann. So those were kind of the four projects in the software side of things. Um, yeah, that's what I remember. So there, there's some of the history. There's a lot of nuance in there too. <laughs> so you are a good storyteller. That was excellently told and well, hopefully very enjoyable. It made sense. <laughs> <laughs> I am looking for the logo. It's at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to show we should, we should talk to Mike Dolan and Kate and others just to see how they frame or what, what they have in their minds about this process um, and parallel conversations. Because probably there are, but I'm not aware of them. That would be interesting to capture. I agree. Hmm. So the original name of the, like all of the branding was OSS Health Metrics. Yeah, I actually owned OSSHealth.io for a time. Okay, yes, it's much better. Yeah, that just doesn't flow. The no. awesome, <laughs> awesome, no, awesome. It does kind of sound like awesome, which I could get behind that as well. But I like chaos. All right, I'm gonna for the next meeting. I will bring the logos just so you can all you can all see we can them. Do, we can do a revote. And then and we'll see if I win this time. <laughs> <laughs> We're you not may. getting new you stickers may. made. This is from 2017, so I, I'm holding <laughs> holding a grudge for a long time that I didn't win. <laughs> we can help you work through your issues with that, Matt. We'll hey, help thank you, you very on. much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There, uh, we made it. Our... Yay, we're about out of time. <laughs> see, that was perfect. Um, hope everyone has a great rest of your day and we will see you next week. All right. All right. Take care, everyone. All right. Y'all take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye.